I was mentioning to a patient yesterday, I think you could potentially make a case that the association between alcohol consumption and Alzheimer's disease could potentially be mediated almost entirely through the absolute destruction of sleep that alcohol causes. Especially sleep fragmentation. One of the things that we've been seeing routinely in our work with Alzheimer's disease and sort of Alzheimer's disease pathology within the brain is that fragmented sleep, sleep that isn't nice and continuous, that has multiple awakenings throughout the night, it's not just about quantity of sleep. It's about two forms of quality. One is consistency. In other words, going to sleep and going and waking up at the same time and keeping that nice and consistent. Don't shuttle that around the 24 hour clock face. Don't be going to bed at 1 a.m. one night, then 10 p.m. the next night, and then midnight. That confuses your biology. We are creatures of rhythm. That's how we were designed. And our bodies love consistent rhythm. And when you force it out of that rhythm, your circadian rhythm as a consequence is markedly disrupted. It's what we call social jet lag, where you're sort of sleeping late, going to bed late at the weekend, and then you kind of need to drag it back. It's like flying back and forth across the country. So consistency is a good one from one night to the next, from one night to the next, from one night to the next. Within the night, however, the second part of quality is just having continuous sleep with as few awakenings as you can. That's where alcohol is vicious. It will litter your sleep with numerous awakenings. And those numerous awakenings mimic exactly what we see as a sleep phenotype that predisposes you to a higher Alzheimer's disease risk. And I think people need to understand that they are not necessarily conscious of those awakenings. That's this true. is one of those things where there are some people who say, look, when I drink alcohol, man, it's a sedative. It puts me out. And I certainly used to think that until I started wearing the ring because the ring shows you, no, actually, first of all, you're never getting down into deep sleep. You're basically vacillating between non-REM light and one minute wake-ups where you're not fully awake and conscious, but you're actually even probably out of theta waves. And you're just sort of bouncing back and forth between God knows what, maybe alpha, theta, alpha, theta, alpha, theta, something like that. And so at the surface level, at the level of your cortex, you feel like, well, I'm groggy enough. This is sleepy. But but in reality, no, it's highly interrupted. And of course, there's the other little stuff that I think people sort of miss out on, which is, you know, alcohol inhibits vasopressin. So it's a potent diuretic. <laughs> you know, someone who's not used to getting up at night to pee is very likely going to get up and pee just from the alcohol, not from the volume of the liquid, but because of its impact on inhibiting the antidiuretic hormone. So it's just adding insult to injury because you get these frequent, what we call sort of arousals or frequent and sort of awakenings. And then you will have a top of that, these bathroom breaks, which are even harder to then sort of get back into set as it were and get into sleep. Those two things together do not make a happy sleep marriage in that regard. And that fragmented sleep we know seems to be a predisposing factor for greater likelihood of amyloid and tau pathology, which are the two proteins that seem to contribute right now to Alzheimer's. Even if we say, well, we don't know exactly if the staging is accurate, we have a very good sense that the input readouts are accurate and they all move in the wrong direction. I mean, alcohol's effect on resting heart rate, heart rate variability, temperature and respiratory the rate. Other one, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's devastating. Yeah. Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many, and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following. Ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive. Access to our private podcast feed. The Qualies, which are a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe.
Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm-hmm.